Okay, so good morning. Uh, today we were going to talk about the uh, the courses that will be offered in the coming academic year. Okay, and then uh, actually we do this uh, every year to uh, to help the student to plan their courses. Especially, you are going to have your course registration uh, this week. Okay, that's, that's why we try to uh, arrange this session to to, to answer your question if you have, if you have any. Okay, so. Uh, so I suppose only here they will be having students from year two, year three, or year four. Okay, and so uh, just feel free to ask any question if you have any. Okay. So 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 that, that's what the, the, this agenda, the outline that we talk about, briefly go through the uh, the typical study plan for both program IRG as well as MIEG. Okay, and then list out all the major required courses and also the elective courses, the requirement for graduation, as well as the new courses that we will offer in the first time in the coming year. And then we'll uh, give a summary of the, the courses that will be offered in different semester. Actually, you should have known that because uh, the timetable has been released on QSIS and you will know which courses will be offered, okay, actually. But uh, here I will give you a list, okay? And we'll also talk about the streams of specialization, okay? And what's the requirement? And also, uh, actually it's kind of optional uh, stuff you don't need to have streams uh, but of course if you want to have the streams then uh, it's still fine because stream is only trying to give you some guideline how the courses can be organized if you want to pursue some specific uh, topics in your you know some directions in your study okay and then uh, if you have any uh, question on different courses we can have some spend some time to uh, to talk about the courses and also uh, feel free to ask any anything about your study no matter it's a graduate requirement uh, course substitution minor or whatever okay you can we can talk about that at, at the final session okay so so first of all and uh, right now uh, most of you at least you are year two or about okay that's why this is uh, your first year and supposedly you should, you should have uh, finished all these Right, make sure you have got all these credit units. Okay, first semester, the basic calculus, the, the physics. Uh, sometimes you may not have taken because uh, physics is no longer a required course here. But in case you are arranged to take it, well, it's, it's fine. Okay, it's still counted towards the, the faculty science course. Okay, so that's why at this moment, this physics course is not a must, but uh, you, you need to. Um, uh, you, you, uh, you need to fulfill some kind of uh, unit uh, requirement. For the faculty science course, which is a, a kind to 11 units. Okay. And then also, you will, you should have taken the programming, okay, the basic C programming for the ENGG 1110. And the second semester in last year or, or in, in the current year, you, you just uh, passed that semester and you have should have taken two engineering math courses, including algebra as well as the, the multivariate calculus. Okay. Make sure you have done that. Okay. And then, uh, or of course, uh, in terms of the faculty, actually, uh, what how we count is that this this one, one 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 zero, as well as one one two zero one zero six one one three zero. These three courses are regarded as the faculty package nine units. That everybody in this in this faculty should have taken these nine units to fulfill the faculty package. Okay, and in the, in addition to that, you have to fulfill the so called the faculty foundation courses that right now is uh the eleven units. Okay. Okay, that include actually that include uh, uh, two courses which has already been assigned. Okay, that which is the uh, two four four zero. Okay, as well as the two o six zero. These two are regarded as the faculty foundation units. Okay, that account for that eleven units. Okay, and then uh, so that uh, so and so that's why you still need to uh, take at least one more courses from this list to fulfill that requirement. Okay, no matter you want to take a chemistry, life science, physics, or some other engineering courses in our faculty, okay, from this list, okay, that will uh, you need to fulfill that requirement. Okay, so this is uh, the, the first year that uh, I suppose everybody should have taken all these, and also you will be aware of the extra requirement that you may have taken some of these courses. Okay, okay, and then uh, this is a uh, year two, okay, and then so year two. And so you right now we are the our math requirement for IE RG student will be ENGG 2440, which is the script math. And for MIEG, uh, you have a new requirement that uh, you will be taking the uh, uh, actually this course will be taken in the second semester. 
okay, for MIG student, that will be MIG 2440. Supposingly, because uh, you should have taken your MATH 1050, okay, that's why that consists of some content the same as in the discrete math. Discrete math. So that's why we designed a new course with 2440, which combine the discrete math as, a, and as well as for briefing. Okay, and then that you, that you will be taken one course to cover these two. Okay, uh, this is for MIEG, but for IRG, that will be still the first term, discrete math, 2440. And second term will be the, uh, the property. And actually, actually, this one should not be ENGG, this one should be IERG. Uh, I should correct it. Okay. Uh, yeah, it should be IERG for 24070. It's a property for, for IE, it's three units. Okay, it's a, a quite different from the one offered by faculty. Actually, there's another course at ENGG 2, uh, 27 something, which is also property offered by faculty, but that one is two units. Okay, the only, that one only have two units, but for, for ours one, IERG 2470, okay, there will be three units, which contain a more comprehensive coverage of a topic because uh, property is one of the key elements in IE. Okay, every data has to be analyzed by property. Okay, that's why property is one of the core part in IE engineering program, uh, information engineering. Okay, you have to know property very well. Okay, that, that, that's why we, we have to, we insist that we still need to have a three units course in property to, to cover enough uh, 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 topics. Okay, so, and then so in, in the, these, anyway, these are required courses that you cannot choose, okay? And, Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, so this is uh, uh, the first time also you have the 2080, which will be the the the, uh, the second courses in programming, okay, that is um, concentrated on C, actually it's trying to extend the topics of C programming, and all, there will be some other topics in the system programming, okay, so that's, that's really help you to consolidate or strengthen your programming skills, okay, and that involve a lot of labs and assignment here. Okay, and then uh, you have the signal system, which is uh, one of the first course uh, to talk about uh, signals, because as uh, you know, uh, telecommunication is one of the uh, strength in IE program. Okay, we talk about communication. And then before we talk about communication system, you have to know the basic signals and system in the math context. Okay, this course is purely math. Okay, uh, trying to talk about different transform. And then, uh, but uh, you can regard this one as some kind of pure math. We will talk about different kind of integration transform, okay, and then uh, how to deal with that, and then you have to understand the mathematical technique, and then after that you will take the principal communication system in the second term that will give you the actual problem to be solved, okay. That's that's why you can regard this two o five one is a pure math, okay, and then the two three one o is applied math. Okay, so, so, so we, in the principal communication system course, uh, we will reuse some of the concept in 2051, okay, and then use it as the tools to solve the real problem in the real communication system. Okay, that, that's, why you, that's why you will need to solve different problems here, okay, but the, for the 2051, it's mostly the math, the proof, and so on. Okay, and then for MIEG, they have their own more map intensive version of 2051. And they, they create new course called Fourier analysis of an engineer application that will be much more challenging. But I can tell you that for those IERG students who want to take the challenge to take a more map intensive version of signal system, you are allowed to take MIEG 2051. And then later on, you can just apply for course uh, uh, substitution. We accept that. Okay, because uh, if you are willing to take the challenge and then you want to take a more map intensive version, you are fine with that. Okay, that's why for those who are really strong at math, okay, but not yet an MIEG student, and then you can choose to take MIEG 2051 to substitute the requirement for IERG 2051. Okay, okay, and then the next one is uh, uh, the, the circuit, analog circuit, digital circuit. Okay, and that comes with the one unit course, okay, because for circuit, Courses, uh, you have to do lab before you understand what's going on. Okay, that's why we have a one unit lab. Okay, to, to, uh, to, to work together. Okay, so I know that many students complain about the lab because lab is only one unit, but usually it will take you four hours, at least three to four hours per week. 
but I guess uh, this is a very conventional kind of training in engineering. Okay. Sometimes lab course is a, is a kind of the least units, but you take with, take you the most time, which is everybody in the engineering area. They have gone through this kind of training. Okay. So right now you are already very good there because the um, the lab usually you only need to submit the lab report only uh, one week after that. I can tell you that in my time, I have to submit my lab report 24 hours after the lab, which is the common practice in the, in the past. So that's why you usually on, on a day that we have to do lab until 6, 6.30 in that day, actually we cannot sleep at that night because we have to rush out that lab report overnight and then submit in the morning next day, which is uh, which some kind of very conventional kind of engineering training in the past. So right now you, you already have one week time for you to work on, okay? So, and then, so this is the, the first time and then for MIT, you, you have two more, two more courses, okay? And then uh, you have to follow the MATH uh, requirement, okay? And then you have to take these two courses in the first time. In the second time, uh, you will have to take the, uh, the data structure, which is the, uh, the also the third course in programming after you have taken 2080, okay, to T2080. So mostly, if you fail in 2080, okay, we mostly will ask you to drop CSCI 2100 in the second term. Because uh, you, if you fail in, the, in the, the programming course in the first term, it means that you are still not ready to take the next step in programming. Okay, this is our recommendation. Okay. And after that, uh, second, and it, we will, you will also take the, the just, I just mentioned the principal communication system 2310, which is the, a comprehensive course uh, to talk about the real communication problem using the technique used in 2051 to solve real problem, the kind of apply math. Together, you also need to work out some lab, some mini project and so on to, you will, you will be building a real communication system by, by yourself. Okay, you will go through all those labs and then you will, need, you will need to do a mini project and then you will really uh, um, build a system, sending something, you receive something, analyze something and recover the data by yourself. Okay, so this is uh, the, 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 another kind of training in the lab for communication system because uh, telecom is one of the key strength in IE. Okay, and for MIEG, you also need to take the second course in calculus 2020. Okay, so these are the, the, the plan for year two. Okay, and then for the year three, okay, and you will take the command networks, which is networking is also one of the major strength in IE program. Okay, that's why this is one of the key courses that you should spend more time because networking, that will really help you in your future career. Okay, because in our, actually in our faculty, uh, we, we IE are the, uh, the, the only department that are, have the largest focus on networking. And right now networking is a key to all the IT in the industry, okay? So that's what really, it will really help you to get the job in the data and networking area. Right now we talk about Internet of, Internet of Things, AI, whatever. Actually all those require networking. If you know networking, it will really, really help you to get jobs, okay? And then uh, we will have the, some uh, lab to assist you to, to, to give you some more practical training in the networking. And also you will have the third course in programming that will be talk about the software engineering. You will learn the object oriented programming, uh, which is the, we use C sharp as the programming language. Okay, object oriented programming is quite different from the structured programming in C. They are quite different thinking, but um, in the outside world, uh, this kind of object oriented programming is one of the standard you have to know. You have to, if you want to develop software uh, after you graduate and then you need to, to learn all these, okay? So these are the required course. And also the, for MIT, you have a very intensive semester. You have three more courses in MATH, okay, to, to, to learn about all these topics. And the second semester in these three, and you, the, for IE student only, you will take the microprocessor. Okay, that is following the circuit. In the second year, you learn circuit. And the third year, you do learn microcontroller and embed system, which is a uh, hardware based. You will learn the, uh, the ARM, and microprocessor, okay, and develop some games uh, in the uh, in the three eight one zero that will be you need to work on a mini project. Mostly students prefer to to write a game uh, 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 project, okay.
Okay, for this part, uh, mostly programming, programming the hardware, which is also one of the um, very important module that is required in the industry. Actually, not many students, not many people know how to program hardware. But if you learn this part, okay, you will also increase your capability. I can tell you that in the past for our graduate, okay, for IE graduate, mostly when we ask them, okay, actually, what are the, the one of the most useful courses that you have learned in IE program? Okay, after they have worked in the industry for some years, actually, quite a number of them, they talk about actually, they learn assembly language, they learn this uh, kind of programming of the hardware that really helped them a lot. Because in the industry, not many people know this. But if you know this, you have your advantage. Okay, that's, that's why we insist to keep this part in our curriculum because uh, we find that this is also very important for the student to develop their career in the IE industry, especially in the IT. Okay, so hardware is also very important because right now, uh, I guess you should know that for our IE program, our focus is not purely on hardware. We are, our focus is not purely on software. Okay, programming is just used as a tool for, to help, help us. Hardware is also used as a, as a tool to help us. Our focus is to build application with networks, hardware and software. We are more on the system and networking view. We are not just hardware, we are not just programming. Okay, that, that's, that's why we will include some basic hardware and also basic programming in our curriculum, but they are just used as a tool to help us to build system and networks. This is the certain part of our IE program. Okay, so this uh, we try to differentiate ourselves from CS as well as from EE. Okay, because they have their own focus. Okay, but for us, we try to integrate them together to form a real practical application, which is what the most um, uh, wanted in the market. Okay, so this is uh, uh you 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 always have your value in the, in the market. Okay, and for the MI, for that, that's why for these two courses, uh, the the hardware part, microcontroller. There's only the required cost for only IERG. For MIEG, uh, these are not the required cost. But of course, they can uh, choose as an elective if they want. Okay, this is year three, uh, required courses arrangement. And then you will have the, uh, the um, okay, let me see. The final year, okay, supposedly the fourth year will be your final year. And then you will, for MIEG, you will have one more required cost. Okay, offered by CSC department. Okay, and so, um, for okay, let me, so, let me stop it. And then, so for the um, and also you need to do a two semester five year project, which is uh, one of the what we call it as a capstone course. Okay, and then which is the most important courses, and then you will work out a project, two semester with a professor, whether you are solo or in a group. Okay, and then you will uh, work out the whole thing. Okay, and this one is probably important for you because uh, mostly when you go for any job interview, okay, and then mostly the interviewer will ask, uh, what is your final project? You describe it, okay, and then uh, you can sell your idea and so, okay, so this is very important to help you in your job hunting. But that's why you should spend some time, more time on this FIP, we call it FIP, okay, and then we will do the project selection in April for uh, mostly for the next academic year, okay. Professor will give you some topics or students are encouraged to propose their own topic as well. Okay, and they will have the presentation in December and in May in term one and term two. Okay, and then the arrangement for this year is that uh, uh, we will have the classroom presentation in December and post the presentation in May. Classroom means that you will just come out and using PowerPoint to present for 20 minutes. Uh, this is the classroom presentation. Okay, and then for poster presentation is that you have to prepare a poster. Okay, we will provide a poster stand, and then you will you will stand in the in the uh, sixth floor reading room for a morning or an afternoon, around two to three hours, and then there are many visitors to come to, to stop by, and you have to present your idea to them. The examiners, the department examiner will will pop up randomly and then ask you question and give you assessment to you. Okay, that's why these are two different kinds of presentations that will be happening in the next year. Okay, so this is the, 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 uh, the year four. These are required courses. Okay, and then for major electives uh, for IRG, you still need to take 20 more units. Okay, 
And then for MIEG, you need to take 14 more units. Okay, and these are the requirements that for IRG, well, that 20 minutes, you have to take at least 15 units from our IE major list. And you can have five units as a more flexible data that you can take all others. Uh, to the 3,000 code above from other programs in our faculty. Okay, you can choose, you, you can choose CSCR, you can choose CLEG, you can choose SEM or FinTech or some others. It's all up to you. But uh, it's, at most part, units will be count towards this units. Okay, for MIEG, uh, and you have 14 units, okay, and then you, uh, you can, uh, at most, you can take three units because uh, for MIEG, we still want you to take more courses in engineering program, okay, in your elective, because uh, you have already taken many MATH courses in your required course list. That's why we still want you to take more engineering courses in the elective list, okay? Okay, so these are the list of the uh, major elective, okay? Okay, I guess uh, this is, uh, there's some, uh, I have to change this number. This number is uh, not yet updated. It should be 20 units here. This should be the uh, uh, 15 units here, okay? These are the list, the actual courses that we have already have here for IE electives. And also uh, you can see that it's 3,000 coded, 4,000 coded, and also for all the 5,000 coded, suppose these courses offer for postgraduate level, okay? You will see that if you take these courses, uh, your your peers will be maybe they are taking they are they are taking the MPhil or PhD program. Okay, they are actually the PhD they are the graduate level courses. But as an undergraduate, you are also allowed to take it. Okay, if you are interested in those topics, and for some elite program students, they also need to take at least one uh, graduate level course to fulfill your requirement. But for general uh, undergraduate, you are also allowed to take these courses to count towards your major electives, okay? It depends whether you are there enough, you are, you are brave enough to take these courses. Uh, it really depends on the, uh, the, the topics that may interest you, okay? So, so these are courses, actually we offer so many courses and so that's why uh, you should have your freedom to take, really, really depend on your own interests, your time, timetable, and also and, and sometimes you have to aware of the cost loading, okay? So when you plan your timetable, please uh, also try to understand the coursework requirement of individual courses. For some courses, they are really, really coursework intensive. For example, let's say web programming and security for 210, okay? This one is one of the most uh, coursework intensive course. You have to do many projects, okay? You have to do many, many projects per semester. For example, programming big data system also very, very uh, cost were intensive, okay? I, I, I was told that uh, they had to do a few assignment. For the first assignment, they have to spend at least 40 hours, 40, not 40, 4 hours, okay? To debug the first assignment, okay? So, and also another one is 4180, okay? Network programming, network software design programming course. This one also is very uh, um, project oriented, okay? You have to do at least four to five projects per semester, okay? But of course, uh, by going through these kinds of uh, very solid training in programming in different area, you will gain the most, okay? You have gone through the, the, the tough time and you'll gain the most, okay? And you'll become an expert in that programming. And so that's why you are, you are encouraged to take those, but uh, please aware of the uh, low balancing, okay? That's, that's why you don't take these more than one, or more than two courses of these kind of intensive courses in the same semester. Otherwise, you will live in hell in that semester. Okay, you don't, you cannot sleep every, every day. Okay, so try to space them out. Okay, let's say in one semester, at most one or two these kind of courses, at most. Okay, and then try to space out your timetable. Okay, low balancing is very important for you. Okay, cloud computing also many projects. Okay, and these two lab also purely based on projects. Okay, but sometimes uh, project training is also very important, okay, because you gain the experience of how to design system and then work out and debugging is also the key part and then you will learn the most. Okay, so that's why these are having all kinds of courses to depend on your, on your interest. 
And then just to mention that we offer a new course, okay? The brand new course, uh, Introduction to Cryptography 4150 in the coming semester. It's a first time offering, okay? And so this is a course online I just uh, extract from the uh, courses to let you know more. Uh, uh, cryptography one is one of the sub area under the cybersecurity, okay? And so uh, this is more uh, using the math models. Okay, based on number theory, this have a, a, a number theory to do some crypto cryptography here to achieve this, uh, the the purpose of cybersecurity. Okay, that's why uh, if you have interest, uh, you can uh, consider the tickets. It's a first time offering. Okay, so cryptography is a new course uh, here, and then together with the uh, four one three zero introduction to cybersecurity. Actually, for this course, uh. uh it will also have some discussion on basic cryptography, but that the focus on this course will be shifted to more on system security, okay? Because I, we already have a pure cryptography course, and then so that's why cyber security course will be shifted more on the system security part, okay? And then if you have taken the basic course in cryptography, and then you can consider take the next level, which is applied cryptography, which is the advanced level cryptography here. Okay, and that's why this is like the, the, the um, and also there are some others, let's say the digital forensic. Okay, and then uh, these are the security related courses. Okay, so these are elective courses. And for MIEG, they will have you please check your uh, actually these two numbers are not yet updated. Okay, I will update it uh, after uh, before I post it, I will update these numbers first. Okay, so. Uh, so the, the cost list, you have to check it from here, okay, 14 units, at least uh, at, at most three from this list. Okay, so that's why these are the uh, relative requirement. Okay, so major GPA, because uh, every student upon graduation, when we do the honor classification, uh, you have, uh, we have to calculate your major GPA as well as your overall GPA. Okay, for the real GPA, it will be counting all the, all these program coded courses, all the program coded under our faculty at 2000 level and, and higher will be counted. Okay. And then, um, so, and, but uh, uh, in, this, uh, in, in this contest, okay, they try to exclude the faculty package math courses, the science courses, physics, or, but the circuit course is counted because circuit course is really created by us. And we want to we want to count this course into the major GPS as well, although it is using the credit units from the foundation course. Okay, all the other math courses, okay, uh, all the other ENGG course, including two ENGG 2440, will not be counted. But for probability, I because it becomes IRG, and that course will be counted. IRG 2470 will be counted because that it belongs to our own course, not the foundation course from the faculty. Okay, that's why these are the, the part that you have to be careful. And then we try to calculate the major GPA for that. Okay, and then uh, uh, you have some, you have to miss some threshold uh, cutoff level in order to be classified by different honor. First on, second upper, second lower, so on and so. Okay, and then of course there will be the corresponding overall GPA requirement that uh, including all your GE course or the, um, the, the PE course as well, they also have some requirement for different honor classification. Okay. Yeah, okay, for, uh, I got a question here that is the cryptography will be counted as IE major elective. Yes, it will be counted. Okay, and so uh, we will, by all means, we will try to help you to count it as, because sometimes because of the administrative uh, uh, issue, okay, Maybe on courses it's not yet counted, okay? But uh, we will try our best to, to resolve those for you. That's why whenever you have taken this 4150, it will be counted towards your major, major elective, okay? And let me see, is there any other question here? Okay, and then how about IRG 4260? What is your question? This one will be counted for sure as an elective. That will be all for the first time. Okay, it's taught by me actually. Okay, so curve base cutoff for uh, 
actually to make your GPA, you you can calculate by yourself, but um, but uh, mostly that will not be released to to you, okay? And your transcript only having the cumulative one, but only when we need to do the honor classification, the RES will provide the list for us with, with the overall GPA as well as the major GPA, and we rank all the students by means of major GPA first and to do the honor classification, okay? And then um, actually from starting from last year, okay, the honor classification, I guess it should, should has been, uh, yes, uh, from courses, it may also stay in courses, so uh, you can check it, okay? And so from starting from last year, it seems that uh, the, the cutoff is uh, quite clear from for different honors, uh, quite clear, let's say uh, 3.5 or above is first on, uh, 3.5, one or above is a second up. And so these are the quite standard cutoff uh, adopted by the universities here, starting from last year, okay? Uh, so as long as you can get your mid GPA above 3.5 or above, uh, you can secure a GPA uh, first on, but you still need to fulfill the, uh, the overall GPA requirement, which is about around 3.3, something like that, okay? It, we have experienced that, we have cases that in the past, the students are very good, having really high major GPA, 3.9, but uh, somehow he failed in some non-major course, okay? So that makes his uh, overall GPA less than 3.3, and that makes him cannot get first on, okay? He, has, he, can only, he, he, he got only second upper, that happens before. That's why you also need to spend time on your non-major courses. Make sure you also meet the requirement of the corresponding uh, overall GPA requirement. Okay. So these are the, the graduation part. Any other question? Okay. So uh, I can tell you more about the uh, four two three zero. Okay. Later on, after we finish this this part, I can tell you, I will tell you the workload for that. And also uh, for CSCI three one five zero Sam one is yes. The first the one in first term is only for CS major. Okay. And as it does, SAM2 is open to others, including IE, and they have reserved some quota for IE students. But the first time, mostly is for their own major. Okay. And uh, timetable is finalized because you're going to have the course registration already. Okay. We cannot change anything more. Okay. And then so. Uh, Which compulsory course you are going to apply with for three one oh oh pre registered courses already apply with the compulsory course? It depends on whether you have okay, and then you can take it next year. Okay, so you still have one more year here, right? Advanced advanced you have three years here. Okay, so you still have time to take this this one. So actually timetabling, I can tell you that uh, is, uh, is a very tough job to do the timetabling because uh, there are so many courses. And also we have to need to map the courses together with the math department because we also need to serve the MIT program. Okay, that's, and also uh, CS program, CS courses, okay? Sometimes uh, they also occupy some good time slot. That's why it's a very tough time to us to do all the timetabling, especially for two year program, senior entry, three-year program, four-year program. There are so many combinations we have to serve. Okay, so that, that's why please uh, understand that uh, uh, we have spent much time to do the timetable trying to uh, uh, make everybody happy, but mostly we cannot 100% do that. Okay, somebody has to sacrifice, but uh, we try to make sure that you still have time to take it within your study period, okay? And also uh, sometimes, uh, after we have made a good plan, but at the end, university cannot give us the, the room, okay? They don't have the lecture theater. And that's why we have to, we are forced to change it. And that makes the timetable not that optimal, okay? Let me see one more, let me find any other question. Uh, for advanced science students, it seems there's many time forms that it seems to be that it has the student Because you know that uh, the timetable from CS, I cannot know. I cannot know that they are timetable, okay? By the time when we do the timetable, 
Okay, so it's, sometimes it's, we, I only uh, try to know the 3150 from them. Okay, because we try to offer 3150 for our sec, in the second semester for our IE student. Okay, and then uh, for minor, because it's just for, 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 um, for CS minor, uh, it's not for many, too many people because later on I'll talk about CS minor. Okay, uh, I, will, I will tell you later on. But, uh, but actually, personally, I do not encourage you to take CS minor, although it's easy to get. Because uh, as an employer, major IE CS minor is, means nothing. Okay, you will only take one more course to fulfill CS minor. The minor doesn't help you at all because IE and CS are basically very similar. Okay, a, 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 similar, a, a minor with that kind of similar program as your major means nothing to all the employers. A very different minor, let's say your major IE, you, might, you minor econ, your minor statistics, your minor BA, that means a lot. Okay, that's why you have one more minor with too much similarity with your major, it means nothing at all. Nobody will care about this. You actually, you're wasting your time. Okay, but if you are if you are minor in let's say even music or even psychology or some others non major, non engineering part, that will give you some more added value. The employer will really value your your minor program. Okay, but I understand that okay, you only need to take one more course to get the CS minor. Why not? But uh, I can tell you that nobody care, nobody nobody in the industry care about this. Okay, and then. It's just a name minus yes. And so to me, okay, I don't I don't like this kind of major IE minor minus yes kind of combination. Okay, I'd rather to see have a really non-engineering minor that will help you in your career. Okay. And then uh next question is a dean's list and honor for IRG is calculated with MIE MIEG. And dean's list is from a faculty base, okay. Is uh, only is is uh, ranked among all the students in the faculty, not just IRG. Okay, they only care about the GPA. Okay, across the whole faculty, no matter which program you have, you 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 are in. Okay, and then the honor for IRG and MIG are uh, classified in different committee. They are they think that differently, but of course there are some alignment between these two. Okay, and that but uh. Uh, um, but actually right now, because of the university has adopted that kind of clear cut off, okay, no matter your IRG or your MIEG, as long as you are having meeting that cut off, you will already get that particular or respective uh, honor. Okay, so that's why, but of course, uh, we will try to observe that whether there were good alignment between these two over. Okay, in the past history, they are more first on in MIEG because relatively they are, their GPA is higher. Okay, it's only because they got most of them got high GPA, and that's why they kept they get more persona. Okay, it's not because of MIG program itself. It's only because of student really get really high major GPA, and that's why they get persona. Okay, mm. okay, and then the next question, yeah, if I want to take some PG course which have time collision. Okay, it depends whether which is the most important course for you for graduation. Remember. Required course is something that you need to take for graduation. No, Those PG no. costs you will only be. Okay, can you turn off your your microphone? Okay, because I I heard I heard some noise. Please, okay. So, I continue for that. Remember, you are going to have your first degree, and you your required course should be your first priority. Okay, don't use the elective course. As an excuse for yourself to drop your required course or you take the required course later. It's ridiculous. Okay, please fulfill the basic requirement for graduation first. Take all the required course first and then elective. Elective, you offer tens of elective for you. Okay, 20, 30 elective for you. There should be some that can fit in your timetable. Okay, so we already have so many elective course for you. Okay, so but re remember, required course is something that you need to pass before you can get graduate. That, that's why please put priority 
to get the pass in all the required course first. Okay, so you are already very good here that you are enjoying more than 30 elective courses for you. I can tell you that at my time when I study engineering here, okay, we only have we only have 10 courses in elective. We have to take eight. We have no choice at all. We have to take air free elective course they, they offer. Okay. So right now you have so many choices that you're so you have so flexible for you for you. Okay. So please uh make use of this kind of flexibility and choose the one that fit in your timetable as well as you have in, you have interest. Okay. And then so please don't drop any required course. This is not an excuse to drop required course. Okay. Take the required course first, get it passed, and then for the rest of the time, take your elective. Okay. And then next one, uh, let, me, let me see. Is it possible to four old x zero and four old x zero? What is this? Let me see. Okay, this one. Um, we are this will not be offering this year, but we plan to offer it the year next because uh this uh, I can tell you that the, the truth that when this one is first offered, it was taught by a, a IE alumna. Okay, and then after that, he right now he worked overseas, and that's why he cannot help us to teach this. But actually, we have plans to resume this course after asking some of our colleagues to prepare for it. Okay, that's why uh, this course I plan it to operate in the year 2022 to 23. Okay, I still need to give some time for our colleague to prepare for this course. Get it ready. Okay, that's why we know this course is also very important. Okay, that's why I keep on, I keep the this course in the list, and then I I I, I have tried hard to find the uh, the, the the respective colleague to 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 teach it to prepare for it. Okay, that's why uh, this one will be offered in uh, two o two 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 three here. Okay, hopefully. Okay, and then uh, recording. And also, as well as the uh, the PowerPoint will be posted on IE homepage, and mostly recording will be password protected. You can only view the recording using your IE VPN, and also they may need some kinds of password. Okay, later on you will see the instruction on the IE homepage. Okay, and then uh, pre-assigned course again. So for lab courses pre-assignment. Okay, in case you have any different problem, or you can. You can talk to Moon about this, and to see whether we can, we can, um, we can make this uh, arrangement for you. Because you know that for lab course, the our teaching lab has limited size, the number of equipment. Okay, we have limited supply. Okay, and there are also some guidelines that we cannot host too many students in the same lab at the same time. Okay, that's why uh, due to this kind of limitation. Okay, uh, the quota. The maximum quota is fixed. We cannot add in, in any extra student. Okay. So that's why mostly if you want to change the lab time, please try to see if it's if there any other student in your targeted uh, session to swap with you. Okay. But of course, uh, you can first force out your request to Moon first and we'll see whether we can help. But of course, mostly you better uh, uh, proactively uh, ask. Your colleague, your classmates in those sessions to help to swap with you. Okay, so this is uh, the resolution for the, the lab. Okay, because uh, we cannot really com accommodate too many students in the same lab because uh, we have limited number of the equipment. The benches number are, are also limited. Okay, please understand that. And then uh, for 4150. Yes, it's counted as the cybersecurity stream. It's added to the to the list of the cybersecurity stream, and also the okay. I, I will show you this. Uh, let me show you the uh, cybersecurity. Yes, it's added to here. Okay, and then uh, four four two one zero. Okay, uh, I will talk about the courses individually. Okay. 4210, I will talk about that. And also, I will talk about 4230 as well because uh, uh, the request was just listed here. And then, uh, minor course counted in honor. Okay. Minor course 
it's mainly based on whether uh, it is uh, uh, 2000 or about older. Okay, as I said before, the major GPA calculation is purely based on this. As long as they are coded like this, they will be counted. Okay, for the major GPA. Stream is optional here. Okay, I may, I may tell you, the stream here is trying to give you the idea of how the elective courses can be organized if you want to focus on a particular area. Okay, because it serves as a study guide for you. If you want to make some specialization in some particular area, you can take the courses in that area, in, in, the, in that list. But actually, it is optional for you to declare any stream. You can graduate without any stream. Okay, so the only difference is that uh, we only uh, if you take uh, if you have taken uh, let's say uh, four courses, okay, from that list, uh, we, we, we the department can issue a letter of certification for you or claiming that or you are you are in that stream. Okay, hoping that in, in some case that may help you in your job hunting. Okay, but uh, for me, okay, I my personal advice is that your first degree uh, is a general degree in engineering, especially in the IE area. Okay, you should not limit yourself into one particular topic or area. You should broaden your horizon to learn some basic stuff in every area that will increase your job market okay so that's why for me i i don't think you it is a must to declare streams you only need to pick the courses that you feel interested and also you find it useful to you okay and then just take it no need to be limited by this kind of stream take whatever you want and you, whatever you are interested and whatever you can fit in your timetable. That is my advice. I do not encourage students to take streams. Okay. Take as broad as possible. That will help you in your job market, in, in your job hunting. But of course, if for some students, they should really, they love one particular topic very much. They want to spend more time to take more courses in that area. It's also fine. Okay. But, uh, it's just uh, uh, it's not that crucial to really concentrate on into one particular uh, area. Okay, that is my advice because it's all up to you. Okay, let me see. Um, may I ask who I should find to ask for cost substitution for getting permission? Okay, for cost substitution, you should fill in the form downloaded from LES and submit to Moon in general office. You know Moon, right? Just send uh, fill in the form and email or submit a paper form to Moon and she will help you to do the cost substitution uh, processing. Okay. And then uh, for the change of session, okay, for change of session, you can send the department at IE is fine or uh, if you want to have a quicker response, you can send it to Moon. Okay, Moon will be handling all the um, courses for undergraduate. May I ask about the contact of Moon? I don't know how to contact um, oh, okay. person. Okay, you can, you can simply M-O-O-N at ie.uhk.edu.hk. Okay, or I, her full name is W-M-C-H-E-U-N-G, W-M Chang. Or actually she has an alias, okay, email alias, which is M-O-O-N at ie, that is still fine, okay? You can just send your request to her and she will help you to resolve it. Okay. As long you. as you as long as, as you can. Okay. Because there's some many, many other factors that she, she may not be able to do anything. Okay. Um, and also gap year last year. Okay. And now I counted the found years to happen. Okay. Yes, uh, actually mostly for third year courses, uh, we we trust that you should be mature enough to handle your course. That's why. Uh, you should register the courses by yourself. We mostly pre-assign second year courses. For third year, sometimes we pre-assign for, but for those uh, who have some special cases, just like you have a gap year. And so please re register by yourself as well. Okay, so you can register by yourself uh, under your case. 
and then uh, yeah, okay, this uh, finish all the the inquiries in the chat box, and then uh, let me tell you more about two calls because I still have asked. One is the introduction to Internet of Things. Okay, so this course uh, it will be taught by me in the coming semester, and I can tell you more about this. Okay, I, I guess uh, you should have the concept of Internet of Things right now because it is a uh, one of the uh, major trend in IT uh, in the area worldwide. Okay, so we put together of IoT as well as AI or big data. They, they are all the current trend in the in the, they find a lot of application. Okay, so uh, we in this course uh, the arrangement is that half of the coursework will be used the doing lab, half of it will be lecture. That's why for this course you have every week two two period per lecture, and then the other two period is for lab. Okay, so lab is one of the most important one of the very important component in this course, and in the lab session you will be given the sensors, mobile controllers, all the, uh, the, the CP, Bluetooth, BLE, and also some uh, uh, RFID, and all those uh, interesting things. The Arduino, to, you will have, you will follow the lab sheet to work out the, uh, the uh, how to control those, okay? And at the end, you will need to design a mini project to, to based on what you have learned, in the lab session, and then you will propose a small IoT project to demonstrate your idea. Okay, that account for 50% of the cost. And the other 50% is for the lecture. I'll talk about the principle, what are the uh, consideration if you want to design IoT products, okay? And what are the aspects, what are the new technology supporting the IoT, okay? And so that's why you will learn Wi-Fi, you will learn Bluetooth, you will learn uh, CP, you will learn right now, right, right uh, Wi-Fi 6 or some other new stuff, uh, some other uh, uh, the software part, I'll talk about the, the software defined network, we'll talk about the uh, network virtualization and also big data uh, security and also those all the components in IoT I will cover in the lecture part to let you know the principle. Okay, and that will involve a final exam. There will be no meter exam here. There's no tutorial in this course. Okay, and then everything will be more conceptual. I can regard this course build uh, for lecture part, it is some kind of common sense in IE, okay? And final exam will be open book. You can bring in anything, okay? And then so it's only test your idea and your experience in playing around with different IoT system, okay? So that's why you don't need to prepare anything. I always tell, tell the student that this kind of test is a kind of IQ test. No need to prepare anything. Just use your basic instinct to answer the question. Okay, and then so that's why from the past experience as student, I, I did ask students about the course workflow of this course because I involved some lab, also you need to submit the project. And most of them uh, told me that uh, the coursework is not as much, not heavy as they expected. And they really enjoyed the, 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 the lab part. They play around with those uh, sensors or those uh, uh, controllers, they really enjoy those. Actually, we attract many CS major students to come, come down to take our course here, okay? Because uh, this course is also listed in their uh, specialization course list, okay? That's why you will have some students from CS, some from EE, they also join this course to learn the IoT because this is the only IoT course in the faculty so far, okay? So that's why I hope that this course is not purely concept, concept because uh, if I talk about concept two hours, four hours per week, that will be too boring. Okay, I hope that uh, you still have the chance to play around, okay, using real stuff, okay, and build real system by yourself that will make the course a more interesting. Okay, this is 4230. Okay, and then for 4210, which is the uh, the web programming security, and that will be uh, using the, uh, they will use, you'll be, you will learn the web programming as well as the app programming on the mobile phone. And the emphasis is on how to implement security in the very practical sense on this web as well as the app. Okay, that's why you will go through a lot of the uh, um, uh, uh, practice assignment or projects to really implement some security measures to make sure your web application as well as your uh, mobile app, they are secure. 
Okay, that's why this is all as a also quite um, uh, uh, project intensive kind of course. Okay, and this but this is a very useful course. It's always uh, quite popular. Okay. Yeah, the, yeah, you learn HTML, CSS, and some others. Uh, there, there's some others, uh, uh, security measures. Uh, okay. So it depends on who is teaching. Okay, in the next, in news, in next this year, we will have another pro, uh, pro, professor teaching this one. This uh, last year is different. Okay, so different professors have different uh, focus how to create this web programming. Okay, and then uh, what else? Which what, is there any other courses you want to? Uh, uh, I can briefly elaborate more. Um, except C3150, does there any CS course not open for RE students? Actually, for, actually for most of the uh, CSCI major courses, okay? Um, depending on the quota, supposedly they should be open to everybody. But, but sometimes, uh, let's say 3150, because it is a core course in CS program. That's why they reserve that course for CS major. For all others, uh, 3,000, 4,000 code in CSCI, mostly, uh, as long as their quota is not yet full, okay, I guess you should be able to take it. You can talk to the professor of the course, on, and then you, can, you should be able to take it. Except in some particular cases, uh, they may have there some reasons that they just only reserve it for major. Okay, and that is only it may depend on uh, different particular course, but in general, most courses should be open to everybody. Okay. And um, okay, for 4004, which is uh, we have offered this course for two years already. Okay, actually, for this course, e payment system and crypto, okay, cryptocurrency, we used to create this course for the FinTech undergraduate program in SEM. That's why initially this course code is FTEC, okay, 404. But right now we convert the code, it's so-called a double code course. So that's why we use the term IERG. But that's why we, we will offer this course in IE program, okay? The instructor is still, is still the same, okay? The course instructor is still the same and talk about different kind of e-payment. You know, there are many options for e-payment right now. Octopus or WeChat or Alipay or so many. They will talk about different underlying principles. What are the security measures inside? And also the cryptocurrencies, the Bitcoin or some others. Uh, and so all these will be covered. The, I'm mostly concentrate on the principle, but you better to have some, this course uh, should have the prerequisite of the uh, 4130. You need to know system security before you can understand the issues in the e-payment and the cryptocurrency. That's why 4130 is the uh, prerequisite, okay? And then uh, 4340, okay. 4340 actually was created by me two years ago, okay? And then supposedly to cover all the up-to-date um, uh, telecom technologies, okay? And, but uh, because of, because I'm, I'm busy in other courses, that's why in this year, I still have no chance to offer this course, okay? Supposedly this course, it will talk about all the, the most up-to-date technology, including 5G, uh, fiber wireless. Uh, so everything about the telecom, using optical fiber, using wireless 5G, all the latest uh, latest uh, technologies in the software area, the SDN or some other virtualization. And so all those, and also I will invite many guest speaker to talk about the, the latest thing in, 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 uh, in this area. And that is a more similar type kind of uh, um, uh, course without any map. This course will not do any map. We talk about high level treatment of different topics. So let you know what's going on in the real world. And then those those uh, those passwords will be helpful for you to do the interview because uh, when the interviewer tell, I'll tell you about some, some word, okay? Actually to the interviewer, those are trivial in the IT, IT industry. But actually sometimes you may not have heard that before. That's why this course is helping you to let you know what are the most popular topics, most, most popular words, buzzword that people are using in the, in the outside world. Okay, and that will helping you to know more about, to, to enrich your common sense in IT. Okay, but I, I will try my best to operate uh, somehow when you, have, when you have time. Okay, and then so 3150, as long as uh, you 
in CSCI Spring Wild, as long as uh, their quota is not yet filled, you can still request to edit. As long as the, their quota is not yet filled, okay, you can yeah you can talk to CS department to edit, okay, and then to see whether they approve or not. The the, the rights is belongs to CS department, okay, and depends on the uh, professor who are who will be teaching that course, okay, and then uh four one eight zero okay, and this is a network programming course, network software design programming. That course was offered in last year, okay, because uh, in the coming year, the professor teaching that course will be on leave in that semester. That's why that course is not over, will not be over in the new academic year, okay? When he come back and then he will offer it again, okay? That's why it's just happened that uh, he will be on leave in the whole semester two, okay, in the, in the new coming year in the new academic year, okay? And then uh, because uh, Professor Jelly also need to teach the 2080 in the first term, that's why he she has no time to offer two courses in the first term. Okay, that's why you only only offer 2080 and then and you will not, 4180 will not be offered in, the, in this year. Um, does anyone open an IETG group? It's really uh, depend on yourself. I You are encouraged to work out something like this, okay? And then in case there's some, a group of students from you, no matter year two, year two, three, year four, you have some uh, uh, good interest in something, you want to form a group and then department will give you support. Talk to me, okay? If you have any good idea to promote any activities within our IE program, okay? Please uh, feel free to talk to me. Uh, I will see whether this is a good idea and it is that if you, if you get a good idea, we will support whatever we can. Okay, so you are encouraged to propose something new and interesting to all the peers in the IE department. Okay, 3150 is not, uh, I, I know that 3150 have a prerequisite of 3060, but that prerequisite was set by CS department. Actually, I, I also don't know why they try to put a hardware hardware cost prerequisite to a OS. But anyway, they have they have their own reason. Okay. Because they because uh for 3150 we talk about operating system. Oper operating system can apply to software as well as apply to hardware. They may just want the student taking 3150 have some sort of knowledge in, in the hardware computer architecture as well. That's why they put 3060 as a prerequisite. That is their uh, their their purpose. Because that cost was offered by them, we have no control. Okay, so this is uh, something that you have to observe the, the requirement. Okay, and can you recommend? Okay, let's. Okay, let me introduce one course to you. Um, this is a course that not yet offered for the last two years, which is the three two eight zero, networks, technology, economics, and social interaction. That course was used to be offered by our former colleague in IE program, former professor. Actually, that professor has moved to CU, CUHK Shenzhen, okay? And then uh, that course, when he was here, that this course is very popular. Many students took this course because this course is a course um, um, more on the, also enrich your common sense in IE, in about network. They will talk about how Google, Facebook works, what are the underlying principles uh, uh, in those technologies? How the networking part related to the economics and so in the interaction? This course is quite interesting because it involves different areas and to give you some linkage between technology and the social life. Okay, it involves some math, but not that intensive. And then we are going to offer this again in the next year, in the, in the coming year. Okay, Be because we have a new professor who is willing to uh, take up this course. And that, and he is an expert in uh, network optimization. That that will be good. Okay, and then that, uh, that's why uh, this is. I guess this one will be a very interesting course for you. Okay, and three three two zero is a um, is a course I talk about um, human interaction in human information interaction. It's just talk about um, how the um, is involved not just engineering. It also involves some psychology and also some other social interface, okay? So you will need to work on some homepage and you will uh, you have some kind, try to fit in some 
engineering theory into how to realize a system that will involve human and that human that because human will involve human perception okay they are set there are five senses and they are the, the different way and and their psychology how they can interact to affect how your social media work that's why this course is uh, somehow we can regard it as an interdisciplinary kind of course not purely engineering it involves some other social aspects social science but uh the, the instructor the course instructor also try to add in some basic uh, uh math or some theory to enrich the technical content it's not purely social science but uh we we put in some more uh, engineering content in, in in this one to make it more technical but uh the focus is trying to, to see how the social media involving human how can be works with engineering and then how engineering can provide a platform to support how the people work together okay and then um what else and also product design projects uh, is always full every year okay i can tell you that we only have 50 uh, full quota but i can tell you that this course was full every year because this is a, a course that is more soft no math but it's based on the project idea it will tell you how to develop a project from the very beginning and how to design it how to sell it how to market it you don't need to prototype the project you don't need to prototype your idea but you know how to what are the design considerations to make a project work and that is also something you have to train okay uh, not just purely map but sometimes uh, you know how the technologies can really to be designed in such a way that it can really help to improve life okay that's why it will involve different aspects as well not purely math okay so that's why this is also a very good practical course for you to play around not just purely theory and math okay what else and then if you want to learn more about the simulation and big data uh, basic statistics this is a course for you okay because uh, you know actually machine learning big data are based on statistics okay and then you try to see the interrelationship between data to get out some predictions okay and these courses will tell you some tools and uh, how to do this uh, statistical analysis how simulation can help and that will be the basis if you want to proceed to the high level big data process and also machine learning Okay, machine learning is a term people use all the time under AI, but actually machine learning involves tons of math. All everything are statistical functions. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the, the, we try to make this cost as a basis for if you want to go for big data and machine learning path. Okay. Also, one more thing, no protocol. Okay, this one is supposed to be the second course after you have learned the basic computer networks okay the IERG 3310 is the basic computer networks which is a required course and then network protocol is the part two of computer networks which consists of all the internet protocols supposedly as an IE major I highly encourage you to take this for this one okay to fill up the whole mean that you have have a full picture about how the internet and command networks works okay you cannot claim yourself nose network if you don't know about protocols in networking okay so that's why this one is very important for you to have a full picture for all kind of command networks okay so this will be good for you to take i can tell you that in the old times this course is also a required course okay actually the command networks should be a two semester course okay and right now we only set the first course as a required course right now the second course this one as a as elective but uh for me i think that this course is as important as equally important as the first one that's why uh, i encourage you to, to take this course as well if you want to have expertise in networking okay and then uh for networking part because networking is one of the very uh, major strength in ie program in our faculty that's why here I also prepared the slides that, that uh, talk about the two networking courses that we offer. Okay, actually these two two level networking courses actually is uh, designed at different levels. They can help you to do all kind of practical works in building networks. 
system administration and so on. Okay, 4831, we designed it to be as a co-requisite course for 4090. Yeah, that's why if you take this course, you are encouraged to take this lab course as, as well, because it will provide all the uh, practical work for you to understand what is a theory uh, uh, about and how to realize by yourself. All the equipment here are the same as what people are using in the industry. Okay, that's why if you learn all these right, right now here in these courses, you will use the same technique to solve the real problem in the real in industry. Okay, and then uh, 4840, 4841 is the even enterprise level. Okay, and all these content are very, very important if you want to pursue your networking career. All the industry outside, no matter what kind of enterprise, they need people to maintain their network like this. And here is not just maintain, actually the course here is help you to design. You'll learn how to design all these kinds of networking elements. Okay, these content are very, very valuable and important for you to develop your career in networking. Okay, and we our, only our department offer this kind of networking intensive courses. No, you cannot find these in other departments in the faculty. Okay, that's why if you are really interested in networking, you are you are highly encouraged to teach these to take these two courses because it's really really useful for you to get a good job in networking area. Okay, after you graduate. Okay, and also our staff in this area they have obtained the 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 uh, the Cisco the highest level. Uh, uh, qualification. There's a CS, the, the, the CSIE, which is the toughest uh, co uh, professional qualification level exam. And then uh, our colleague, our technical staff here already obtained those qualifications. And he is the one who designed the course for you. That's why the content here are really, really important in the real world and very useful in the real world. Okay, that's why this uh, here I try to. Uh, promote this course for you because uh, they are so useful for you if you want to work here as a network engineer. Okay. For any others, I, I guess 4090 is already a very unique course, which is a uh, so called the advanced computer, computer and networks course. Okay. And so after you have taken that course, uh, and you better take these two lab courses together, and then you'll be expert in networking. Okay. And then, um, yes, uh, actually, you are advised to take command number first, IRG3310 first, before you take 4130. That will be helpful. Okay. And uh, because, uh, some, because for 4130, for even for system networking, uh, for uh, cybersecurity, it's based on networking principle. Okay. If you, if, if you cannot understand those uh, technical words in networking, how can you understand what's going on in the, in the security? Okay, that's why it's, it's good that uh, you, uh, you learn the basic component network first before you take the system security, okay? But sometimes uh, the professor teaching that course will allow you to, to take these two, courses, these two courses together in the same semester. So that's why you are advised to talk to the professor first. Okay, you can talk to the professor teaching the 4130 and to get his advice. Because a different professor, when they teach the course, uh, they will take different approach. Some people will be more networking intensive. Some people may not. Okay, that's why uh, at this point, I cannot say that uh, you cannot take 4130 if you haven't taken 3310. Okay, I suggest you to talk to the professor uh, who are teaching the, the 4130 first, asking his opinions, okay? And then whether he allows you to, to, to take this that course uh, without knowledge in networking, because maybe he will spend some time on networking part as well, okay? So yes, you can, you, you can, you can talk to him. Actually, uh, if you cannot take it in the first term, CSE department also, they offer CSCI 4130 in the second term. Actually, this is our coordination. We have an agreement with CSE department that we offer in term one, they offer in term two. Although different program code, the content are the same. Okay, of course, uh, we are, you are encouraged to take our own version. Okay, but I guess in terms of content are somehow similar. Okay, 
So CSCI 410 also fulfill our IE major electric. We are regarded at the same cost. Okay, so that's why term one will be offered by IE, term two will be offered by CSC department. Okay. Is there any other question? Okay, so that's why here are some of the, the list. Uh, let's say, for example, uh, you have learned about some basic math courses, circuit, and also basic system system, and then you will develop our required courses, including the, the communication related, uh, principal communication, digital communication, and also some microcontroller. controller, okay, the hardware part, okay, and then uh, you will further branch out to 4,000 level, okay, depending on the, uh, the topics, image video, multimedia, IoT or wireless optical communication, play switching, play communication switching. And also if you are if you are brave enough, okay, and you can also explore these uh, graduate level courses in different specialization. Okay. And then uh, you have the software part, okay, and then you have learned the basic uh, programming, data structure, you go for software engineering. These are the three uh, required costs. And then uh, because for networking, you also need to do project, okay. And uh, you have to build your own network by yourself. And then you have OS, all these software will branch out to these courses more on the software part. Okay. And then uh, and then you have some even senior level, graduate level kind courses in the uh, software security and big data area. Okay. So there's a this just give you uh, the the in the relationship. Okay, sometimes you need to take one course first before before you can take the other one. For example, if you want to take a uh, 4.3.0, it involves a lot of programming. So that's why you better take, you better have taken 3.0.8.0 first. Otherwise you cannot work out those coursework. You, you, have, you have no ability to, to work out those, those coursework here. That's why there are some kinds of prerequisite knowledge before you can take some senior level courses. Okay. So these are the courses that are, uh, this full list, actually you can find this in your courses as well. Okay, and then so these are the uh, uh, the, the the blue one are the uh, the uh, RE courses, which are elective. The green one are the required course. So that's why you can see uh, in both semester we offer similar number of courses. Actually, here I already exclude those uh, six thousand level because six thousand level are more research oriented. Okay, so that's why here I only list up to the five thousand level. Okay, mostly most students will only take uh, most undergraduate students only take up to 5,000 level. They dare not to take 6,000 level. Okay, so that's why here I only list up to 5,000 level and then you, you can choose uh, whatever you want, depending on your timetable, your interest and your low balancing and so. Okay, so these are the arrangement. Okay, the so uh, streams, I've talked about that already. Okay, so we have classified group or group different uh, courses in different category, okay, different lists. Okay, and then so uh, as long as you have taken at least 12 units from that list, you can request the department to give you a letter of certification in that stream, hoping that it can help you when you do the job hunting. But it's, remember, this is not a must. Stream is not a must, it's optional. Okay, you can pick courses in all areas, depending on your interest. It's still fine, you can still graduate. Okay. Uh, does it mean the CSCI for yes yes if you it, uh, for those courses which require form three O IRG okay if you have taken CSCI form form three O it's still fine because you have gained those knowledge okay so you you are right okay and then uh okay finally is a CS minor okay this is an issue last for the past at least five years uh, students keep asking. Uh, how many courses I should take if I want to claim CS minor? The same thing happened to CS. Okay, CS major want to take IE as minor because uh, you can see there are many overlapping of the courses. Okay, between these two programs. Okay, that's why um, uh, we finally have uh, made the decision that uh, if you want to claim uh, CS minor, you have to at least take three unit CS course to fulfill CS minor. And also right now they create a new course. 2720, which is so-called the web, web programming, something like that, okay? And this is uh, most IE may, student may not take it. That's why if you want to claim their minor, you have to take this one. 
Okay, this is the extra measure that uh, uh, we both department want to differentiate, and we don't want to have any easy minor without any taking any extra cost. That's why right now the arrangement is that okay, uh, if you want IE major, when you take CS minor, you have to take at least three more units. So two seven two zero is one of the one of those kind. Okay, and then for CS major who want to take IE as a minor. We have add in another cost in the in the minor requirement. Okay, that's why they have to take extra cost for that. Okay, so that's why this is our arrangement between these two departments to offer the minor. As again, I said that okay, this is a very actually even for one cost, three units, is still a very easy minor. Some students in the past they 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 just want to take this advantage. But uh, my advice is that minor is something that you want to show to your employer, future employer, that you know more than your major, okay? But if the minor program is the same as the major program, it makes no sense, okay? That's why I, my, my advice is that you better take a non-engineering or non-major course or non-engineering minor, that would be good for you. Let's say minor in BA, minor in economics, minor in psychology, minor in science or whatever, uh, music, even music is still fine, okay? so. That you really let people know you have a good, very enriched and broadened profile. Okay, major IE and mana CS means nothing to most of the people in the industry. Okay, this is just my advice. But of course, you are still free to do this if you want. I, I cannot stop you about this one. Okay, so this is uh, the minor part. So remember to take at least three units because the final approval of minor is still go with that granting department. Okay, CSCI is still CSE department is only is still the the, the final authoritative uh, 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 bodies to approve it. Okay. Uh, for cost of substitution, you just need to fill the form. We need to apply to use I H R three O H O and three O six O to fulfill three one. Yes, you you can just. Uh, you you can fill fill up the form to draw the cost uh, equivalent. I will post this uh, PowerPoint on the IE homepage uh, hopefully this afternoon. Okay. Any other questions? Or anything about your curriculum, your study plan, your graduation requirement, and so on. Okay, for MPhil or PhD, okay, so uh, do I need to take note? Actually, admission to graduate school, no matter MPhil or PhD, uh, it doesn't require you have taken 5,000 courses. Okay, we only, we only, we only look into the, the, your strength in your basic undergraduate program. Let's say the most of the required courses and also your undergraduate related courses. Whether it consists of 5,000 courses, it doesn't matter. You can still stick with the four thousand courses, okay? We 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 will not do this kind of discrimination. And taking five thousand courses may not give you a very good uh, uh, extra advantage. It may not, okay? So that, that, that's why it really depends on your interest, okay? So take it and then for graduate admission, graduate school admission, this is not an issue to. This is not a, a very critical issue, okay? And um, so if you want to. Uh, apply for graduate school, okay? The most important part is that uh, GPA, get a good honor, okay? Better to get second upper at least, and you have a high chance, okay? Mostly we seldom take in students uh, with uh, second, second class lower, okay? Mostly at least second upper, uh, second class upper, mostly. But of course, there's also always exception, okay? Uh, I cannot say it's, it's, it's uh, to be that uh, the hard 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 and then you have to look into whether the professor is willing to take you as a student. Okay. After you have confirmed this, and then you can start to apply. 
Okay, application without any potential supervisor will not be handled. This is our practice. If you if you you, you just apply to graduate school without looking for potential professor supervisor, mostly the department will not review your application. Okay, because mostly we will review those are uh, the professor are really nominated people to review. Okay, so that's why the crucial thing is that you have to approach your potential professor as supervisor and then talk with him or her and then make sure him, uh, he or she are willing to take you. And then you have and then you can start go through the paperwork in the application. Okay. And then uh, let me see. And then for 3150, you can talk to, because uh, uh, the prerequisite of 3060 is done by the CS uh, E department. And my suggestion is that you can try to talk with the course instructor of the CSCI 3150 in, in semester one. Talk with him or her if your situation and whether he allows to waive this kind of prerequisite. Because a course instructor has the ability to, has the right to waive the prerequisite. It depends whether he wants to exercise or not, that kind of rights, okay? So try to, you're encouraged to talk with him or her first, okay? And then if he allows you to take, and then you can take it. If, if, if he insists that you need to have 3060 as a prerequisite, that's, you have to follow, okay? Any other question? So one more final remark, okay? And this is uh, for, especially for those uh, new students joining IE as a year two, okay? We, from the past two or three years, okay? And uh, we, we have observed that there are many requests of late drop. But uh, I, I just understand that the previous late drop is due to different reasons, due to maybe epidemic, uh, pandemic, or in the past, maybe those uh, uh, social events and so on. But uh, from now on, okay, okay, hopefully those can, can be gone, okay? Hopefully we resume the normal, okay? We, we hope that late drop is something that is not encouraged, okay? Unless you have any medical reason. If you can provide any medical recommendation that you have to late drop, it is fine, okay? But if you, don't try, just don't just write down. Oh, I'm de I'm depressed. I, I have some uh, some problem. I cannot sleep. This is something that is not strong enough to, to, to support your 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 request. Okay, unless you look for a psychiatrist having some medical uh, document. Okay, so late drop is not always encouraged. Okay, please do your add drop within your add drop period. Okay, so but uh, I but uh, we, we, we try to give you one chance of late drop within your normative study period. That, okay, if, you re, if this is your first time to request late drop, okay, depending on situation, we will consider to grant that late drop for you. Okay, and that is the only chance that you can late drop without medical supporting document. Okay, so uh, if you, request for a second time without any medical support, okay? We will not entertain that kind of late drop. Please bear it in mind because uh, you cannot late drop just before final exam. This is really ridiculous and really irresponsible, okay? So for normal situation, okay? Without any special event, okay? In, in, uh, so we hope that you should think carefully before you add a drop, add a course, Okay, make a decision before the effort job period. Okay, if you, as long as you stay in the course, please work out all the coursework, fulfill the requirement of the course, okay? Under some special situation that you need medical support and you can provide medical evidence, you can apply for late drop. But uh, of course, uh, before you do that, it's not just a sheet of medical proof, okay? You cannot just go to the CUHK medical clinic and to give a, a a sleep, a, just stated, oh, you, you are, you, uh, you, you, you have attend a doctor of a, a, a medical session. 
it's no no use because uh we need concrete description of your of your problem okay and then we also need to have our advisor professor advisor to talk with you and under the support uh, uh, um, under the support of that professor advisor in your case we we can uh, we can consider your case your your later request okay it's not purely just a, a simple sheet of medical evidence we also need you need you also need to talk to our professor advisor before he also agree and support your case and then we will, we will consider okay we don't want to make it too easy late drop it's so you, you can you can just drop if you have no competence in final exam is something very really ridiculous okay so, so please uh think about your course planning make your final decision before the end of actual period that will be more responsible to everybody okay and then um uh, uh, approaching professor for postgraduate what are the ways to know whether professor have a research project i, I guess uh, uh you have first of all uh, when you approach professor you have to think about what kind which research area you are interested in and then you know different professors have different expertise in the research again you can just approach those uh, who fit in your research interest and then uh, you can uh, you may not know whether the professor has a active research project at that moment or not, or not. That's why you have to send email, politely accept an appointment, and then talk with him or her. Okay, and then, then you have a, a good discussion or good chat. It will be helpful for you, for both of you to understand uh, among yourselves. Okay, then that's why feel free to make an appointment request with different professors here. We are, our professors here are very nice. Okay, that's why as long as you have interest to talk uh, about their research interests, I guess most of them are, are, are happy to arrange a, a time for you. Okay, so that's why just send an email to make an appointment. Don't stop by and then knock on the door and then because they are sometimes they're busy. Okay, you are encouraged to make an email appointment first. Okay, they can, they can squeeze a time slot from their busy schedule and then they will uh, set a time and then talk to you. Okay. Okay, so the, for the stream of every enrichment, okay, and this is uh, the list of costs uh, um, used to be uh, regarded as the courses that they are not too popular and also relatively they may be more difficult in terms of content. So that's why enrichment means that if you want to know more and or know more about the principle at a high level, okay, and then these are the courses actually. To me, is this enrichment stream is uh, quite strange. I, even to me, I I, I still feel, feel that uh, this enrichment is uh is quite strange. Uh, I will see whether I should change to some do some uh, restructure of this kind of streams. Okay, but enrichment. I will talk to our curriculum uh, uh, um, group in our department. Uh, but anyway, at this point, this is still a stream. Okay, as long as you have taken some courses here and we can require enrichment but i can tell you that nobody in the industry employer will understand what is enrichment <laughs> that, that, that's why it's not that's not helpful to you okay so um i, I guess uh, i i should look into whether we should remove this this stream okay because it's meaningless to you and meaningless to the to the it industry uh, employers okay anyway in Q, uh, let me see. Is there any can for the people that is requested for that? Yeah, I have already answered that. The CSCI 4130 should be able to fulfill the prerequisite, okay, uh, for other courses. In case the QSS has not yet updated, okay, you can just talk to the uh, professor of, of, of that course and then saying, saying that, oh, you have already taken uh, that equivalent course, course already, okay. Any other any other questions? Also, I, I, I just mentioned that the late drop policy. Okay, so everybody uh, will give you one chance. Okay, without any medical support, we will approve it upon the support from the uh, from the professor advisor. Okay, uh, other than that, please don't abuse to use late drop. Okay, unless it's really necessary under different medical condition. Okay.
any other because sometimes I is I when I when I read that request of oh, I'm depressed, 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 depressed. Keep using the term depressed, but without any real proof. Okay, so it's uh it's not strong enough to, to support your case. I understand sometimes you are really under uh, under quite stress or under depression, but uh, uh if you have, have that kind of problem, please go to see a doctor and get the proof from the doctor. That would be really helpful to you. Otherwise. That kind of statement, I will just treat it as a, as, a, as a special excuse that is not helpful at all. Okay. So, any other questions? So, again, it's a good chance that most of students uh, in IE, no matter which year you are, they are here. And then, in case you have any suggestion to our curriculum, or some other things, for example, any uh, interest group or any activities, and uh, uh, maybe you may want to have the uh, uh, the um, the group for the IE society in the next year. Okay, feel free to talk to me. Okay, all these kind of student activities are highly encouraged. We will try to support you as long as your idea are really good one. I hope that everybody in the IE program will be benefit from your input. Okay, so please. Uh, actively contribute to our IE family and then propose or organize any activities, okay? And department will give you full support, okay? Please just talk to me for any good ideas, okay? So actually, I, I guess uh, uh, we should also need to look for the, the members for the IE society for next year, okay? So if you have any interest to organize your own group, okay, let me know, okay? I'm, I'm happy to talk with you. Okay, is, is there any other, other requests or any complaint? Let me know. And then, I, and, and also within each semester, I will also try to get some chance to talk to some of you, okay? And I will send an email to invite anybody who want to talk with me about any suggestion in the curriculum courses, any complaint, whatever, okay? I, because I want to understand your feedback or any problem that you are facing. Okay, please uh, just let me know. Okay, we will try to see what we can help you. Okay, so feel free to talk to us. Uh, uh, we are, I guess we are nice enough to uh, uh, talk with you. Okay, don't be scared. Okay, feel free to send me an email and then for any ideas, any suggestion, any courses you want the department to offer, let me know. I can see whether we can find the right professor to teach it. Okay, so your input is very important to make our curriculum much better. Okay. So any other any other question for that? Machine learning because of machine learning because of CSC department, CSC department also have a machine learning course, okay. And so uh, we cannot offer another machine learning course, okay, uh, here unless we make it double code, okay. And this is one pos This is also possible if we have enough high student who are really interested in machine learning. And we can see whether we have a professor here are willing to take up that, that course under IERG code. Okay, it's possible, but uh, please give me your uh, more uh, strong uh, request for strong evidence, okay, whether the need is there. Okay, and then, uh, but, but, but remember, I just mentioned machine learning is something that requires a lot of uh, statistics, uh, statistical uh, analysis background. Okay, it's not just a single course that you can take it right away. It involves a lot of different functions, different math behind. That's why we have to make sure you have enough prerequisite before you can take that course. Okay, so that's why it's, uh, if many of you have a idea that you hope IE, IE, IE department offer something about machine learning, okay, uh, talk to me and then voice out your idea and then and we can work out to see whether we can also offer it. Actually, we have a 5,000 level course, something related to the uh, uh, machine learning and here, 5130. But this one is very math intensive. It's a probabilistic models for, for an algorithm for machine learning. Okay, so it's uh, something, some, some tools, some math tools to support machine learning, okay? But uh, if you want to have some basic machine learning course, uh, at this moment, you can take the one from CSE department, okay? 
Uh, but uh, but in the long run, you think that this is uh, very important to our IE curriculum. Okay, we can we can also consider to find the suitable professor here to offer a similar course. Just talk to me. Okay, I, I understand that machine learning is a good word to be put in your CV. Okay, because everybody like AI, everybody like machine learning, deep learning, this kind of thing. Okay, um, but remember, these are just buzzwords: AI, machine learning, deep learning. If you really learn that particular topic, it's not easy. It's something that is not that easy to learn. Okay, so that's why you have to pay much effort to learn all those uh, uh, areas. Okay, so this is a. Uh, uh, of course, if you are willing to take the challenge, okay, we are we are ha we're happy to help. Okay, so we will see whether we can really have uh, have some advanced course in this one to help you. Also, one more thing I would just want to uh, uh, maybe give you some preview. Uh, I'm planning that in the next, actually in the coming academic year, I may offer a some kind of workshop for uh, to have to have try to help you to become a real IT engineer. That is uh, to tell you to teach you more soft skills. Because right now you learn a lot of courses about the principle of, of technology and so on. But sometimes uh, as an IT engineer, if you don't know how to present yourself, if you don't know what kind of information you need to, uh, to, make it, to make yourself more presentable, your audience will be bored. Your audience will run, will, will, will run away, okay? That's why that workshop will be taught by a, uh, um, a professor who is teaching the MBA and EMBA program in CU. And then she is willing to help us to run a workshop like this. It's actually is a one semester long workshop. It's not just one day or two days. It's uh, at least maybe uh, 40 hours, that kind of thing. It's a training workshop that can help you to shape yourself, to make sure you know how, what are the soft skills as an engineer, how to think, how to prepare yourself, how to pre prepare your presentation and how to make it, how to turn your idea into product. It's not like the ELTU courses in communication in your E3, but here we are more related to as an engineer, okay, based on your idea from technology, how to make yourself get equipped and then what are the soft skills needed to make you be able to present yourself to the potential IT industry players and now to also how to convert your idea into a product and make it commercial commercialized. Okay, this kind of training is very important for you if you want to enter this IT world. Okay, so that's why I'm I'm still structuring this kind of workshop. Okay, and then um, I will let you know that if anything are made confirmed. Okay, but I I can tell you that this is something is not again it's not a one day two day kind of workshop. It's a semester long. And then make sure you are willing to spend your time. Don't waste the quota because we only have a limited number of quota. You only maybe maybe you only set thirty, okay. And everybody in this class will be very intensively shaped to make it to be a real engineer, okay. And then so, not just technology, you will have all kinds of mindset from business, okay. So that's why. If you are enrolled in this kind of workshop, please really pay effort on to get the full use of it. Don't waste the quota. Maybe some other student really want, want, want to learn, but you occupy the quota without use. Okay, that's why this is something that uh, I'm trying to see whether we can offer this for to help our students. Okay, because soft skills is always very important in addition to the basic technology mindset. Okay. Okay, so workshop is that uh, is a workshop is trying to provide all kind of training in addition to technology. It will help you to uh, to learn all the soft skill needed to convert your idea from technologies to products and how to present your idea to your potential uh, uh, industry players. Okay, and then you know how to plan your design, how to plan your uh, product commercialization technique. And for yourself, how to equip yourself, okay? And then, so 
And also, if you have intensive training of your presentation, presentation, uh, presentation skills and so on. Okay, so there's so many things that you will shape yourself using from a MBA point of view, how do a engineer can behave such that they can work together. That's why the instructor is actually teaching the CUHK MBA and EMBA courses. Okay, and they know what are missing for an engineer to become a real player in the industry. Okay, so, so that, that, that's why I hope that this kind of training will be helpful for most of you. Okay, I will see whether we can over this one. I will let you know once they are confirmed. Okay, and then, um, and for all the recording here and also all the PowerPoint, I will make the final revision and I will pass it to our department general office and then they will try, uh, try their best to post it uh, maybe by the end of this afternoon. Okay, on the IE homepage, you will get the links. Recording will re may require some password access. Okay, slides will be just posted on the, so check for the banner of the IE homepage. Actually, Arduino will be used in the lab of IERG4230, Introduction of Internet of Things. All the lab courses, all the lab work of the IoT course IERG4230 will be based on Arduino. That is Arduino Nano. Okay, so that's why by taking that course, you, you will know how to play around with the Arduino and build an IoT system by yourself. Okay. If you fail in 2080, but pass 2100, um, okay. Okay, as long as you pass the data structure, it's fine that you can take 3080, okay, it's fine. You can take the software engineering, but uh, please also spend time to, to get back the credit units of 2080, okay? Any other questions? Well, anyway, if you have any other uh, questions, so feel free to send me an email. Okay, and I will ask you by email as well. Okay, so anyway, I will just uh, end this session right now. Okay, so uh, I will see whether we can post all the material uh, to the IE homepage uh, by the end of the day. Okay, so thank you. So uh, feel free to send me an email for, for any further questions. Okay, so take care. Bye bye.